In life, Teresa cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And in baptism, she received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. So now Father Joe will place the book of the Gospels on the coffin. The cross is there already, so our opening hymn as we came into the church reminded us that God is close to us in this time of loss, but we are also close to our loved one, to Teresa, in a new way today. So we extend our sympathy to Teresa's family, to Mary, Helen, Michael, Pauline, Maria, Linda, Patrick, Colm and Audrey, her brothers Mick, Pat, sisters May, Anne, Mona, Madeline, Margaret, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, in-laws, nieces, nephews, relatives, neighbours, carers and friends. Gracious God, we entrust Teresa into your everlasting care. As we do so, we're thankful for all she means to us, for the person she has been, the service she has offered, the contribution she has made to our lives and the lives of this community. We're thankful for what she means to our family, colleagues and friends, for us here today, those who can't be with us. We're thankful for what she will continue to mean to us in the years months and weeks ahead. We're thankful for her achievements, things we look back on with pride, challenges and obstacles faced, successes won and potential fulfilled. We're thankful for the experiences that we've been through together, the love and friendship we have shared, the qualities and characteristics that make Teresa special to us. We're thankful for her faith, her commitment to Christ and her own experience of God's love through her life. For all we owe to her, the many ways she enriched our lives, for the memories we will always have. We come in hope and confidence today, trusting in God's promise and assured of God's continued purpose for our lives. And in that faith, we entrust Teresa and ourselves into God's keeping for now and for all eternity. So we come together with love in our hearts, love for someone very special to us, but at times we haven't loved each other as well as we might have, so we ask for pardon and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins, bring us all one day to everlasting life. And let us pray. God of our ancestors in faith, by the covenant made on Mount Sinai, you taught your people to strengthen the bonds of family through faith, honour and love. Look kindly on Teresa, a mother who sought to bind her family to you. Bring her one day to our heavenly home, where the saints dwell in blessedness and peace. We ask this true Christ our Lord. So now we have our first and second reading, please. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil that is covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for our salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say to me, write down, happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Spirit says, now they can rest forever after thinking their work, after their work since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. One of the most important things any of us has to do in our life is at some stage to make a will. It can be a difficult thing. But the gospel I'm going to read now is part of Christ's will to his disciples then and to us down through the ages for over 2,000 years. And this is what part of what he said at the Last Supper. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. As I have loved you, that is the way you should love one another. By, ev by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one for another like my love for you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, a peace which this world cannot give. This is my gift to you, a special peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. Have faith. I came from the Father and have come into the world and now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. When you hear this you will be sad but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take this joy from you. From the time we received our first communion down to our final Mass, our Requiem Mass, what Christ started at the Last Supper has been at the heart and center of the Christian religion and a great consolation to all of us. The paradox is what started or is called the Last Supper, in fact, has become the First Mass. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus Please be seated. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> 
So Father Joe spoke there of the Last Supper, but also just reflection, and it talks a little bit more about post the crucifixion of Christ and the disciples meeting him on the road. But begins by talking about this, the life of each of us can be thought of as a series of stories that come together over time to form one story, a story that is profoundly ours and absolutely unique. Everybody's story deserves to be listened to and taken seriously. And to know a person's story is to somehow understand that person. When a person dies, their life story passes before us with its joys and sorrows, successes and failures. However, there are no facts about a person's life that tell the real, much less the full story about that person. At best, what we have are fragments even the pattern of the life can escape us. The full story, we believe, is known only to God. The sad fact is, however, all our stories end in death. And even when death comes naturally at the end of a long and a full life, we do not like a story that ends like that. We want our stories to end happily. So we can understand how the disciples felt as they trudged wearily back home to a mosque on Easter Sunday evening. The story of Jesus, who had filled their lives with hope and meaning, had ended in his death. But somehow Jesus, risen, joined them, but they failed to recognize him. He encouraged them to talk, and they poured out their whole sad story to him. They told him the good parts of it, then its sad ending. For them, the story and the death of Jesus signified the end of the story, the end of the dream, the end of everything. Having listened to them, Jesus took up the story where they left off and showed them that his death, far from being the end of the dream, was somehow the means by which it was fulfilled. He opened their eyes and they were able to recognize him. The one who had died was alive and walking by their side. Death did not have the last word in the story after all. The story had a brighter ending than they could have even imagined. Jesus had journeyed through suffering and death to a life of glory. I suppose part of what brings us today is our hope that the resurrection of Christ opens all our stories to the prospect, not just of a good ending, but of a glorious ending. The first and last words in each of our stories belongs to God. So we reflect today on Teresa's life story, born in 1944, Fenner and Slain. So it's 80 years. And just for a moment, just think of all the changes, changes in our family, in our community, and in our world in those 80 years. She was a twin in a large family. She went to school locally here in Grange Geith and later worked in Brogan's hotel and grocery stop, shop in Drogheda, where she learned many skills that she later put to good use for her family and her own life. She married Michael in 1963 they continued to live in Fenner until they moved to Ivybrook in 1976. As I said, she used her skills acquired in early life. She was a great knitter and knitted school jumpers for her children. She was a great cook and fed her family, indeed anyone who came to work for them. It's a story of a vet who said to his colleague, that's a good house to go to, you'll be well fed there. We appreciate that today. The family have memories of flasks of tea, Pyrex dishes of dinner for people working in the fields, brown bread every day. She loved music and listened to the green scene on the radio. She loved bingo on occasional nights out with her friends when the work was done. She was great with children and her grandchildren gave her a great boost in life. She was witty and was quick with one-liners. She was good at keeping contact 
with friends and family, visiting and later years by phone. She would regularly ring her nieces. She'd rang her niece, Diane, in New Zealand, not kind of aware so much of international time zones and that, but turned out to be three o'clock in New Zealand, which was a wake up call for Diane. But she fulfilled her dream too, to visit her brother James and his family in New Zealand. So we appreciate those trips and that connection today and all the connections we had with her through technology. Michael died 31 years ago in 1993, which was a deep blow for her and her family, but she kept going. As I said, she kept in touch with neighbours using the phone, and in later years, she knew numbers off by heart. In more recent years, again, she appreciated the care of her family, the carers and all she met in hospital. She never complained, was big-hearted. She drew family and carers closer to her in recent years, and will leave now a huge gap in many of our lives, missing her laugh, her wit, and her warmth. So that's a short talk, I suppose, about Teresa's life. We think of she will continue to be close to us, as our opening hymn reminded us today. And God is close to us in our loss. That's the message of the first reading talks about a feast and I suppose again we think back on the food, all the food that Teresa prepared over those years. The sense too that as we comfort and support each other, God is with us and God is close to us as we care for each other. Second reading was gives a sense too of God, the good things we do go with us as we go back to God. And the challenge for us is, somebody heard someone talking recently about the relay races, so if you're watching some of them, the thing, but there's a sense too, on a day like today, of passing the baton. We've probably done it before, but trying to keep this a hospitality, a generosity, and a way of life that's changed. But the baton is passed to us to try to keep the memory of Teresa and that generation alive by the way we reach out to each other and help and support each other. Then the gospel, as Joe put it very nicely in that will of Christ to continue particularly to love and care for each other. That legacy again of passing the baton of love, care and compassion. Acknowledging our sadness and grief today, but also our hope that, as was even as the first reading said, our hope is in resurrection. And it becomes, it seems, remains kind of up in the sky. But a day like today grounds it very much for us. That our memories of those gone before us, our love for them doesn't end, but it takes on a new shape, a new beginning today. And we ask the Lord to help us in that way with our love, our care, and to continue our journey in life without Teresa, but with each other and caring and supporting each other as best we can. So with this in mind now, we stand and have our prayers of the faithful, please. God brought his son Jesus through the darkness of Calvary to the glory of Easter. We are confident he will bring us to, through the darkness of death, to his kingdom of light. We now turn to God with our prayers. We pray for all who are gathered here in worship. May our own lives bear witness to the generous love of the Lord who lived, died and rose from the dead so that we may have life and have it to the full. Lord, hear us. God of all constellations, help us in the time in our grief to comfort and one another. May we find light in the time of darkness and faith in the time of doubt. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
We ask the Lord, blessing on all those who are seriously ill, be close to them in their time of sickness, and if it be your will, will heal them and restore them to full health again. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the nurses, doctors and carers who cared with such love and compassion for Teresa. We ask God to bless them in their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all deceased relatives and friends. May the Lord bring them into the light of his presence and give them a share in his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Uh, we pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of Teresa. <laughs> May she now receive the fullness of God's blessing in, in eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. As we pray for a moment for our own intention. I suppose we pray for our troubled world. We pray today as we pray for eternal rest and peace for Teresa, that some of that rest and peace will come to our world. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, these are our prayers, spoken and unspoken. God of love, give us the certainty that beyond death there is a life where broken things are mended, lost things are found, where there is rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have loved and willed of good exists, and where we will meet again our loved ones. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. So now we have our offertory procession. There were people Queen of 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead and our hope that Teresa will also rise again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and saints and the hosts of heaven, we join the hymn of your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us all worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, all the clergy and all God's people, living and dead. Remember your servant, Teresa, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son, <laughs> in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. And we also remember her husband Michael, baby son Richard, parents Pa and Rose, twin sister Mariah, sister Rona, brothers John Joe, Billy, James and Tom. And we remember also all others who have died recently and those that were prayed for especially last night at the blessing of the graves. So have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, saints, and all who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you, Joe. So at the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver and protect us, Lord, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's pray for a moment for peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Still alone, the red cross, the emblem. 
Earlier, Laura sang about Our Lady of Knock, and during these days, the um, novena is going on in Knock, and you can follow it online or maybe go there and join the days. But we just we've been saying the prayer to Our Lady of Knock at our masses during these days. So just going to say it now, and I think again sometimes these things go over our heads, but on a day like today, maybe this prayer can speak to us in a new way. So Our Lady of Knock, Queen of Ireland, you give hope to your people in a time of distress, and comforted them in sorrow. You have inspired countless pilgrims to pray with confidence to your divine son, remembering his promise. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Help me to remember that we are all pilgrims on the road to heaven. Fill me with love and concern for my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who live with me. Comfort me when I am sick, lonely or depressed. Teach me how to take part ever more reverently in the Holy Mass. Give me a greater love for Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Amen.
So God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you are a refuge and strength. Have mercy on Teresa, whose life was spent in your service and the service of others. Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So thank you for coming here today to support the family. I suppose at a time thing, all things get dropped to come and support and thank you for doing that. Thanks to the family themselves for their preparation for today, the readings, the prayers, the procession, and all the different parts of that. Thanks to Laura for the lovely music and all who have helped us. In a few moments, we'll have our final prayers of commendation, and then we'll have an opportunity maybe to sympathize here in the church before we go, Teresa, to, to Navin. So, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of Teresa. May our farewell express our love for her. May it help ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we will joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So now we pray in silence for Teresa. Maybe Father Joe will sprinkle the coffin with the holy water, a reminder of her baptism. And then we'll use the incense, a reminder of our love for her and I suppose our respect for her and her dignity. Go, Joe. <coughs> Our response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Teresa in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you gave to Teresa in life, the blessings you gave to us through her. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward each of us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Teresa. Help us who remain to comfort each other with our faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Teresa forever. So now we have an opportunity to sympathize and then we'll, in peace we'll bring Teresa to our place of rest in Navan.
Sorry, I forgot to say as well, um, there's refreshments in the Sally Gardens now after the Mass, and so even if you're not going to this, um, after So it's not going to be, it's later on, around two o'clock, okay?
were on the side of the door from the road because we still can't uh, go to the car. So we were still can drive the top We got on this side. There's a time for remembering, a time to recall The trials and the triumphs, the fears and the falls There's a time to be grateful for the moment so blessed The jewels of our memory where love is our guest There is gold that is gleaming In a past we once knew In our tears and our laughter T'was love brought us through There's a road we have traveled Where sunlight has kissed That carries us onwards When loved ones are missed There is treasure in our fields There is treasure in our skies there is treasure in our dreaming From the soul to the eye For wherever we gather In the light of God's grace And for all whom we remember There will ever be a place At the close of the day We will rest on our journey To the Lord we shall pray May we thank God for blessings For the moments we've shared As we seek for tomorrow Close by us you'll stay There is treasure in our fields There is treasure in our skies 
There is treasure in our dreaming from the soul to the eye. For wherever we gather in the light of God's grace and for all whom we remember and for all